Hi and welcome to Online Appliance Tech. Today we want to replace the suspension rods for the top load Whirlpool, Maytag, or even Kenmore washers. So if your washer is bouncing across the floor or walking across the floor, or sounds like a freight train, this video is for you. So safety first, you want to make sure you unplug the washer. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to slide the washer out. I just lift, uh, lift up the lid and just pull out. And this way I can get behind it to dis or remove the screws. So to remove this back panel, the size is a quarter bit. So you can use a hand tool or a drill and we're gonna remove a couple of screws. So this is one that clips up to the top. It clips in the, uh, actually we'll remove this one too. This is a little panel that uh, covers up the wiring and tube assembly and then you have one more right here this connects the bottom part to the top part of the machine so we're going to lift up this top so we'll make sure this is uh, removed so then after you remove this one we're going to remove the one in the middle there's none at the top but there's one right here because we're going to slide this back panel off also because we're going to remove the whole top display so that's pretty much it you have two on the right and left of the panel flip that off and like I said just make sure you unplug it now this is the wire and harness and so forth so this is why we have to disassemble disassemble the whole top that way we don't yank or mess up these wires and so forth and the, to do the job it's easier so you have two well you actually, actually have a couple clips that clip into the housing so you can take a flathead and just pry upwards on it and they're little plastic clips that just keeps everything into place. And right here is a ground wire. I try to remove it, but I can't get to it, so I'm just wait till I get a better angle. So as you can see, the whole panel lifts. So this is the reason why we have to disassemble everything from the top so we can get to the uh, inside of the drum to replace the shocks. So as you can see here, if you pull forward after you get disconnect the two screws in the back, you can release the top like this but I should have removed the top cover before I disassembled this but um, as you'll see here I put it back to remove the top cover so this is a card I use you have to press in but it was hard to do because the whole top was shaking as I was trying to get this card in to pop the clips so uh, as you'll see I'll put the panel back into the grooves this way it gives me a type of leverage to remove this so now with the panel clip back in as you can see I'm using my two hands and pressing and lifting on the top panel and it comes right off so I recommend doing this first before uh, delashing the panel from the lower house of the washer um, so I'm going to put a little pad when I flip this over, but you, as you can see there, it's clipped in, and this is a water tube we have to remove, so all this will have to come undone because this whole panel will have to come off. So now we can get to the ground wire, and we'll put this in front, so this way it doesn't scratch the washer or the panel. This way we can get to everything. And this is another one of those plastic clips you just kind of, wiggle it off that way you can disconnect from the uh, panel itself and sometimes it's good just to get a flat head and pry up underneath it that way you can um, easily just pry it out and shake it if you have to as you can see so now I'm going to disassemble all the harnesses that connect to the main control board so when you disconnect these harnesses don't yank up on the wire by itself they have two little tabs on the harness itself so or the clip I would say and you just shake it back and forth as you press down the main control board um, you never want to just yank up on the wire because if you you can pull the wire out of the uh, where it connects into the harness itself and then you'll have a another problem so just uh, press the clips in and just wiggle back and forth as you press down the uh, control board and that's why it's good to have something soft soft underneath it that way you don't mess up the uh, panel or scratch it.
So all that's done. Now we're going to remove the ground wire and now we actually have a clip here that we'll pull off. Um, just wiggle out the panel itself. And this is the tube. As you can see on the upper right hand side, this is the correct way to do it. Uh, here soon in the video I'll show you this in a bigger screen. But this was the wrong way. The way I did just pull down and pull it off. So this is the pressure tube and this is what tells the valves to turn on and off and how much water to put in the tub. If you do not put this on correctly, you can flood your house because if this tube is off, uh, it will not tell the valve to turn off and it can, yeah, flood your house. So we have that off now, so we're going to just make sure everything is uh, loose and disassembled. So next I'm going to remove the water valve. So you can turn the water off and remove the two hoses or you can just keep it on like I do so it's totally up to you so I just kept them on because I just want to do it different this time that way I don't have to hook them back up because sometimes you can strip the valve by uh, taking the hoses on and off so just to keep it all together I just kept it the hoses on as you'll see how I do this here so there's two screws there so you'll just pull this extra clip out of the housing. I guess that's why you gotta really make sure and just take your time make sure everything's disconnected. So this whole harness is disassembled and I'll put that out of the way. I do have an extra ground wire here so just keep everything separated if you've not done this before. Um, and here's the two screws that connects into the water inlet valve. So this say you had a bad valve this is how you replace the valve. Obviously you would turn the water off and disconnect the hoses. But just to get inside this machine, I'm just going to pull the valve out. And last but least, I'll just disconnect. Actually, I'll just leave the power cord on here. So now having everything off, I'm going to remove the panel. So like in the beginning of the video, I'm just going to slide it forward and then kind of turn it side to side until it unclips the top to the bottom housing. Then you're going to just going to place this somewhere safe. And let's make sure it doesn't slide across the floor. So sometimes you might want to put a towel or so forth. This is the door switch. So if you ever had to replace the door switch, it's right here with two quarter bit screws. If you had a door error code, I'll try to leave uh, some type of diagnostic video for this guy in the end of the, the video, just in case you need to diagnose it. So these are the shocks, so sometimes the shocks are easy to remove and sometimes you have to uh, turn it sideways. So this is a little trick I taught myself. You can pull up your hand, press down this plastic uh, piece here and underhook this clip. And this way you're not trying to hold it the whole time with your hand and as you use the housing for leverage, as you can see I turn the flathead um, and then I'll just drop it down. So usually you can just slide it out without flipping it on the side, but on these models you have to go to the bottom. Uh, here's a picture of how sometimes it can be like a little slot. You can just slide them out. And sometimes it'll be like mine and you have to pull out from the bottom. So in this case we'll do this. These are the shocks, OEM shocks. I will leave these in the description below if you do need these. Uh, so check it out. So let's slide this on this back and then we'll remove the old shock and then the same hole that you removed that you'll slide the new shock. As you can see these shocks they have little hooks and a way to actually clip them in or they'll just stay in there if you just slide them up just make sure they don't fall down and you uh, set the washer down and bend the shock. So when you slide it up to these, uh, this hole you'll press it through and make sure it stays by itself and then when you press the or not press but when you set the washer back down just don't jerk it down just be very gentle I uh, get someone to help you if you need to and then you'll come to the top and then you'll grab the rod but before you do that you're going to replace it with these uh, excess parts so you'll replace these and this is where the where it clips into so we will remove that out for now because we got to pull the rod up. So you'll take your hand, you'll 
pull up. You can have someone help you hold the top if you need to, and you can lift up. But this is when the flathead comes in handy because it does it itself. So now I don't have to worry about holding it. I can have my hands free, pry down, and lift up under it. This makes it real simple. Then I can turn it around because the, these do have to clip into the little hole there. And then pull your flathead out and just tap it down if you have to with the bottom of your flathead. So basically that's the same concept for the remaining three. So we'll do the same for these three and I will show you how I do all three. Sometimes you can get a better angle. So pull up. Flathead, it, flathead in, okay, and then I'm going to leverage, remove the clips, put it somewhere safe, grab the rod, remove the flathead, let it drop, then I'm going to flip it back on it. So as you can see, actually, here's the hole. And this is how it holds itself in when you push, push up the uh, rod on the bottom, but you can pry this off with the flathead. And then we'll get the new rod clips. I don't really know what you call these parts on top, to be honest with you. Um, so we'll press it on its back, and then we'll pull the old rod out. And we'll get the new rod. And we'll slide it in the hole. This is a hard camera angle to get to. There's a hole, and if I would, uh, yeah, definitely off on the camera angle. But either or, just slide it up until it clips or hangs onto the side of the hole itself. And once it's not going nowhere, we'll just uh, drop the machine back down. And we'll get our flathead the rod up and then we'll hook that rod with the flathead and then we'll pry it up to put the other access accessory part I will call it that make sure I put it on the right way there we go you can just slide the flathead out if you want to. You can actually pull up on the rod and slide your flathead out. It's totally up to you. Just slide it down, make sure it doesn't go nowhere. So that's two. So the other two, I will kind of fast forward a little bit because I'm pretty sure by now you get the concept.
Okay, great. So now my suspension rods are in. So I'm gonna put the machine back together. We'll first start off, start off with the uh, top. In the same way we took it off, this is a door switch. I'm gonna make sure this is clipped back in. So let me lift this up and press those clips in. There we go. So we'll kind of leave this, as you can see, there's the two clips here. So, and there's a clip up there. So it has to be clipped in. So kind of pull it, pull it towards you a little bit and then keep it flush and press it back. Sometimes you have to wiggle it a little bit to line it up with the uh, clips where it clips in from the bottom house into the top uh, panel or lid, I would call it. Then once you get it in both sides, and you'll just press it straight back and it'll clip right in. In this way we can uh, reinstall the two screws that holds it to the back panel. So now we're going to reinstall the water inlet valve. So like I stated, you can turn the water off and just disconnect the hoses if you like. Totally up to you. But you just slide it in. Real simple uh, replacement part if you ever did have to replace the valve. Um, slide this in and then once you line it up, the valve with the two screws there, you can't mess that up. And just snug them. Don't over tighten them because you can strip it. Um, so just snug them. There we go. And then we're gonna reconnect all the ground wires. And at this point, you just take your time and make sure you put everything exactly where you had on all the ground wires and all the clips. Uh, we will reassemble the board, um, put something under the uh, panel, that way you can't mess that up. And then just align everything and start clipping everything back in. So now reinstalling this uh, tube, this is how I should have done it, but I did the wrong way at first. But this clip actually clips open, so you have to get a flat head. I'll show you here in a moment. So if you try just to press up, like right here, it will not go. So at that point, I realized, hey, you know, you got to pry this clip open. So pry it, and then under clip or underhook the other part, and it'll just open right up. Once you see it with your own eyes, it's actually easier to understand. And then you'll slide it into place. Make sure it's on the uh, pressure, at the top of the pressure switch. And then just press it together and it'll clip back into place. And then once you're done, you can just make sure that tube ain't going to come off. Um, it's a big mistake if you don't. So it's snug, it's not going nowhere. So that's one thing you want to definitely double check. And then just keep on connecting all your harnesses and so forth to the main control board. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And make sure to press in all your plastic clips that keeps the uh, wiring into the housing. It just keeps everything organized. So just make sure you press all those back in to where they go. Okay, so once everything's connected, you have two clips in the back uh, that you have to align to the panel, the top panel. And then you have two clips in the front, the ones that you removed with the card, two little metal clips. So once you have the two back aligned, or then you'll just take the panel and press straight down. That's it. And then you'll just uh, install the back panel, but you'll check 
and make sure everything is connected and in place and all your ground wires are connected and so forth and then we'll install the back panel. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just make sure this uh, drain hose is zip tied to the hose. That way it doesn't pop out. And uh, yeah, plug it in. Throw a uh, large uh, load of towels in there and give it a test run. This is a common problem for these machines to uh, bounce around a lot and not complete the cycles. Yeah, if you like this flashlight too, I will try to leave this in the uh, description below also. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful and please like and subscribe for more future tips and videos and have a good one. Thanks.